On this episode of Radmatic, we'll restore one of the first mass-produced BMX bikes in history, the 1975 Yamaha motorbike. Before we start this video, here's a quick recap of what happened this year after I restored the Yamaha motorbike. The bike was finished just in time for the first annual Dirty Fest, a vintage BMX race and show held in Temecula, California. I didn't know what to expect at Dirty Fest, I just knew I had to go. Riding this motorbike in the suspension class at Dirty Fest was by far the most fun I've had at a BMX race since the 1970s. The Yamaha wasn't the easiest bike to ride, and it sure wasn't the fastest either. The bouncy front forks, springy rear shocks, and the sheer weight of the beast might have made it slower, but it was really smooth, especially on a third straightaway packed with moguls. There were two groups of riders in the suspension class, and I managed to get on the podium with a third place finish. And the Yamaha also did well in the bike show, with a third place finish in the suspension category. Then, in September, the bike took first place in the survivor category at Frogtown Classic BMX Days. I'll definitely be racing this bike again, and I'll keep entering it in shows. But for now, let's roll the video. Please subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching. Growing up, in 74, 75, several kids in my neighborhood had these things and I just always thought they were cool. I had what I consider a moto bike. It was called a Graco. It was kind of like the Yamaha, uh, had a 22 inch front wheel and I'm gonna restore that later too. I bought it on Craigslist about 10 years ago for $75. These things fully restored are, are worth quite a bit of money. I'm gonna restore this, but it's not going to be like your typical uh, show bike. I plan on riding this thing. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun on it. It was in incredible shape. I guess the worst thing about it would be it has these three-piece English style cotter cranks and that was kind of the weak link on this bike. I think in 76 they replaced it with a one-piece crank. They're bent quite a bit you know just from the bike falling over. Both arms are bent, they're shot. Gosh what else? The wheels, I'm gonna clean those up, uh, put them in some wood bleach, polish them up, clean up the rust. It's got a dent here, which is not really structurally a problem. It's kind of cosmetic. I could probably rig up a press of some kind and straighten that, but I might just leave that alone because it kind of adds character. The um, triple tree for the forks is kind of twisted on the right side and bent down slightly. That's gonna be a problem. I have an appointment today at a place called HVC Cycle in Lincoln, Nebraska. They work on restoring old motorcycles, hoping they can bend that back, top plate's a little twisted, and maybe reseal the forks and get them all tricked out for me.
that's going to be a problem, but I think we can fix it. Lots of rust.
Finding a powder coater when you're on a tight deadline isn't easy. Uh, most of the powder coaters in the here in my area were were backed up. I mean, they wanted uh, two to three weeks, but I made a few more phone calls at the last minute, and I found a guy who does a just a fantastic job. When I walked in his front door, here's what he said: "I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have." are a very particular set of skills. Skills that I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make a nightmare for people like you. He said, you can have three things, choose two. Quality, quickness, or color correctness. So that's how I wound up with my mellow yellow motorbike. I was a little bit shocked at first. He had three yellows that we could choose from, and none of them were a, an exact match. One was way too bright, one was kind of more like a safety orange, but there, there was another one that was probably a little too dark to match the original color, but it was close. And I thought that's what we had settled on. When I came in there, this was sitting in the window with bright sunlight shining on it, and I thought immediately, that isn't it. Eventually, maybe I'll do something different. This mellow yellow is growing on me. We'll see what everyone thinks. I haven't cleaned these up yet, but we're putting these back on so I can go to Recycle Bike Shop and have Mike help me get the bottom bracket and uh, cranks installed. Again, these are just installed temporarily so we can get the back wheel in there and get the bottom bracket and the cranks all lined up with a good chain alignment. How nice that slides in there? That's perfect. So this is a 103. That's pretty narrow. It's very narrow. We're going to see if we can pull it in there. Might have to put this on the other side. The chain ring? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, those look really cool. Yeah, pretty good chain line. Yeah.
When I posted photos online of the unfinished, unrestored moto bike, one of the first people to give me some great tips was Jerry Jensen. Jerry is an old school BMXer from the 70s here in Nebraska. Also a great friend and uh, co-founder of the Nebraska BMX Hall of Fame. Jerry worked for a number of years at a place in Lincoln, Nebraska called HVC Cycle where they restore vintage uh, motorcycles and they've, they've done just an amazing job. He recommended talking to Brad there at HVC because he thought these forks from the Yamaha motorbike might be a good fit for like an old vintage smaller motorcycle and we found out that the diameter of the stanchions matched a Yamaha GT80 and uh, actually Brad there at HVC had the seals in stock. He did have to order the boots, the dust cover boots, but he was able to get those in so he resealed the forks, cleaned them up, sealed them with oil. As you recall the, the triple tree was bent. You're looking at it from the front on the right side and he was able to straighten that out quite a bit. It's not exactly straight, but I think it'll work just fine. Then he chased the threads and uh, gave me some new bolts. And on top of that, they painted, they straightened and painted the top plate and painted the bottom mounting bracket. I'm getting really excited because this bike is coming together and today we're gonna put the front end together. The uh, headset nut that goes on the top was a little bit scarred up, didn't look that great, so I broke into a brand new headset that I had and I'm going to replace it with a nice shiny chrome piece. The motorbike forks uh, only have a spring on the right side. I guess Yamaha figured they would be uh, too stiff if there were springs on both sides. I'm going to start by putting the right side leg in. You can see the left side doesn't have a spring, just oil. I don't think I'm going to tighten anything down uh, super tight yet. I think we'll wait until we get the wheel in there and we'll uh, make sure everything's straight and true and then we'll make the final adjustments.
I'm going to put the bike together first before I paint these. Really anxious to get out there and ride it and make sure there aren't any major problems. And then I'll take it apart and paint a few of these various parts like these handlebar clamps. The White Industries cranks cleaned up and polished up really nicely. Obviously the drive side is a bit more complicated getting, you know, in and around the uh, chain ring mounts. But anyway, I was pretty happy with the way they, they turned out. And now it's on to the left side. I still need to clean up the shocks. They're real dirty and crusty and I'm going to polish up the aluminum and uh, clean up the springs and put them back together. Today, my goal is to get this thing out at the park across from my house and just test ride it, make sure that you know everything's that we've done so far is working. Just gonna tighten down the shocks and uh, clean them up later.
Moto bikes were made for three years, 1974, 75, and 76. And this model here is actually a 75. For the 75 and 76 model, they put this really cool banana seat on the bikes with this nice bracket so you could actually get over the back end a little bit. Probably great for wheelies. I'm trying to get this bike ready for an event at the end of the month here coming up April 28th through 30th called Dirty Fest in Southern California. I have a pretty good plan for uh, bending back this seat pan and custom making a, a cover and padding, but I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna go with the old 1974 model seat.
I got these decals for the motobike on bmxproducts.com. They have a bunch of different brands of old school reproduction decals. Great resource to have. Installation is coming along great, except I forgot to hit record when I did the most difficult one, but it did turn out straight and I'm real happy with it. When I started this project, I was in what I would call race mode. In other words, what can I do to make this bike go fast? And what can I do to make it more rideable for me? So one of the things I did immediately is I went with more modern cranks that were longer, that were 175 millimeters and were quite a bit beefier than what came on the bike originally. Also, I knew that riding on vintage style narrow pedals was not going to work with me. Uh, I have a problem with slipping pedals and I didn't want that to happen. So I went with more modern uh, Deity pedals, which are kind of like the ones I use on my mountain bikes. 
Before I went to Frogtown Classic BMX days, I switched the tires and put on period correct Shang shins that we had in the 70s. And I swapped out the Amy Tri Grips for original 1970s waffle grips, the kind that came on the bike. As far as the seat goes, I'll restore the original banana seat in an upcoming video. That'll give me more room to stretch out over the back wheel on vintage style downhill tracks. This has been an awesome project to work on. Stay tuned for more Rad Bike Builds and Restorations, and thank you for watching. Hey Radmatic fans, check out radmatic.com for cool BMX and cycling t-shirts and apparel. We have plenty to choose from, with more in development. Celebrate the vintage days of BMX racing. Proudly display your enthusiasm for all things BMX and cycling. Each shirt comes in multiple colors and sizes. Buying shirts at radmatic.com is one way you can help support this channel. Until next time, stay rad and keep doing it in the dirt.